streaking. Yeah, streaking. Uh, Frank the Tank. Um, I, I would say, you know, back to back games with 35 assists uh, and against that team to only have six turnovers, I think is tremendous. Uh, and obviously you have to make shots to get the assist. But uh, I, I just think the last two games, uh, the ball movement, the player movement, the, the, the not play with each other, but play for each other mentality uh, it was really prevalent in both games and had a lot to do with winning both games by a large margin. Um, you know, Nicola gets a triple double in 28 minutes. Bones gets his first career double double, 27 and 10. Uh, Zeke with 11 boards off the bench. So many guys stepped up, but 133 points, 35 assists, 23 made threes. Uh, and I felt in that second half, our defense was terrific. You know, obviously, uh, in that first quarter, I believe they had like uh, first half, they had 32 in the paint. First quarter, they had 20 in the paint. After that, much better job defensively. We held them to 36 points in the second half, uh, 35 from the field. Um, so just an all-around uh, team win, back-to-back -back team wins. It wasn't just one person. The bench was great. The starters were great. And that allows you to have a game where you kind of you know, win the second half and play uh, really well for four quarters. Brian, oh, we gave it to uh, Davon Reed. You know what I mean? Uh, you could have given it to uh, Jeff Green. Uh, you know, Jeff told me he was a little disappointed he didn't get it. He had a speech ready. Uh, but, you know, I said, well, hold on to that speech for another time. Uh, but, yeah, I, I felt Davon, you know, again, I mean, undermanned. Guys are, are not here, COVID, injuries, whatever. Uh, so when your number is called, go out there and play and do your job. And I thought D. Reed was great tonight. You know, I, I thought his defense on LeBron, arguably the greatest player to ever play, uh, was terrific on other guys as well. Um, so, yeah, he, he's the guy that won it tonight. And, uh Let's be honest, man, you know, the, the schedule has been unrelenting. You know, we play our third game in four nights tomorrow. Uh, the crazy thing about that is uh, of our four meetings against Utah this year, three of them for us on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Um, and they haven't played since the 12th. So they have a nice four-day break, and we're, we're playing them in a third game in four nights. But we love it. You know, we're not going to make any excuses. We're going to go out there and, and, and try to get our third win on this homestand if we can. Well, the scoring, you know, obviously, uh, you know, his ability to um, shoot the ball from deep. He was six of 10 from three tonight. Um, his ability to handle the ball, get by people, make plays. We don't have a lot of guys like that. Um, and, you know, I, I love the fact that I think, you know, late in the game, he, he got a little like, hey, I'm, 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 I'm having a game. So he took some shots that you, you take when you're having a night like that. But I just love the pace in which he's playing. Uh, it's not just about bones. He's playing for the team, making the right plays, driving kick, making his teammates better. He had 10 rebounds tonight. Uh, for, for the smallest guy, the lightest guy out there, that kid mixes it up. He rebounds. Uh, and that's back-to-back -back games where he has sat down and guarded in the post. Uh, and, and I love that. I mean, to see him make that mean face and guard and, and put his body out there, uh, he, he's doing everything we're asking him to do. And, and I just love the the maturation of a young man who's had a – really tough, inconsistent year because of COVID, because of ankles, whatever. And the last two games, he's been terrific. Coach, the bench, second game in a row, that's been possibly really clicked with that team team that really kind of driven by success. Uh, where do you think that something is? And, and where do you think it is uh, at this point? Yeah, well, I, I would say when you look at it, you know, you have a lot of guys playing well in that unit. You know, I mean, Fock was coming off in a, an 18 and 12 game. You know, tonight, you know, <laughs> Bones gets a 27 and 10 game. Zeke grabs 11 boards, uh, eight points. Uh, D. Reed was phenomenal tonight in his minutes off the bench. Um, I mean, it's and, and then I think getting Jeff out and letting him play with that unit, uh, I think he's a calming influence, calming effect on that group. Uh, you put him in those pick and rolls. A lot of teams are switching all that. And you know, Jeff can pick and pop. He can pick and roll. He can dunk on you. He can knock down a three. But I think the biggest thing is that group is playing as one on both ends. They're playing for each other, they're helping each other, and they're trying to make each other better. Uh, and, and that's been the, the best part of watching it for me. Yeah, 
No, because part of it was I told him, I said, listen, I got to, you know, you know, Faku is a terrific player, you know, but, you know, Faku has a ball in his hands a lot. So sometimes when it's Faku, 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 sometimes when you don't touch it and then you touch it for that first time, it feels like, you know, okay, let me get used to this. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting everybody involved, let everybody touch it. So now when that ball does find you, you have a rhythm, you felt that ball. Um, so no, I, I never, I told him, I said, the great thing about you, Bones, is the pace in which you play and your quickness and your ability to get downhill. You know, we don't have a lot of that. So I need you to stay in attack mode. But just being in attack mode for the right play, because I, I, I felt for a while he was just in attack mode trying to get his. And, uh, and, and I think the message was delivered. More importantly, it was received. And I think he's been phenomenal. And we're going to continue to have those conversations because it's my duty as a head coach to help him, you know, to, to, to make sure I'm spending time with him off the court, talking with him, basketball, life, whatever it may be, so that he knows that I love him, I care about him. And then he's going to go out there and play better because of that. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, it's all about winning, you know, just win, baby. It's, I don't care who's playing, who's not playing. Uh, all that pushes me, motivates me is trying to help this team win. And when I don't do that, it's frustrating, you know, and, um, but, you know, yeah, no Jamichael, no Austin, no Jamal, no Michael uh, Porter Jr., no PJ, no Vlatko, no Marcus. I'm probably missing a few guys. But we have more than enough in that locker room to go out there and get the job done. And that's one thing I've stressed from day one. You know, uh, we're not going to make excuses. We're not going to offer explanations. We're going we're gonna to spend all of our time trying to figure out a way to get it done. So came up with a great game plan. It worked tonight. You know, we play them again. And, you know, it's going to be a different challenge that night. So tonight it went in our favor. Uh, I don't know if we're as good as we played tonight. And I know they're definitely not as bad as they played tonight. You know, this, somewhere in the middle is probably reality. But we'll take it. And uh, we'll live to fight another day tomorrow against Utah. Appreciate it, everybody.